What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my workshop and indeed another uh, disassembly video of this, the Bulker SD3. So I've decided to take this one apart a little bit earlier than normal uh, only because um, I want to see what the fit and finish and uh, the quality of the Booker Tree brand and see if it's diminished over the years. Uh, as I said in my uh, unboxing of this video, I've owned three in the past and they've all been very impeccable. But it's been years since I've owned, an, owned another uh, Booker. Um, product like an actual Booker Tree brand, like in this case, and so I'm going to take, I'm going to disassemble this and see what it's like on the insides, and uh, you, you know, just have to look at it and take do a quick comparison of what it would, you know, what uh, the quality of this versus the Booker Plus would be. So right now I have my work area set up. Um, I got my little tray as usual. Uh, I found out that it, it is a T10 for the pivot and looks like it's T6 all the way around for the rest of the scales. So uh, you know, let's go ahead and uh, start this up. Uh, first I'm going to do is take off the pocket clip and of course after I disassemble this I'm just going to put it through some you know generic cleaning and spa treatments and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's start. All right, looks like it's got some uh, internal screws here um, that hold the um, hold the uh, I guess the liners to the backspacer. We'll be removing those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one first. So since this is brand new, I gotta I gotta be very careful of how I remove these screws. And let's see. Oh, good. The internal ones are actually Torx as well. What I really hate is when I get to the internals and they use like normal Phillips screwdriver or screws, you know, <laughs> really, really uh, kind of bothers me. I hate it when they use, use like a bunch of different screws. Um, yep, there it is. So, oh, and they don't have it notched. Okay. So we're going to have to do this little dealy bob here. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera there. All right, there's the pivot. It'd be easier if I lock the knife open first. There we go. Back the camera up a little bit. All right, let's see what the deal with this screw is. Well, it actually did come out, but just didn't want to fall out of the of the um, handle scales here. The stop pin, interesting enough, the stop pin is stuck in there. I, although I don't know, I think it comes out, but it's just stuck in there. Well, that's fine, no big deal. I didn't want it to come out anyways. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this. So here we are with the uh, cage bearings. Give you a first glance at that. Now, I was freaking out last time because I said I was uh, made a comment on my Boker Plus uh, A squared, and I said that there was very little uh, grease or uh, lubrication on these. And I was uh, told by uh, Chris Goodwin, um, who who you guys may know as At Peace Peace, uh, he said that that these don't really even require uh, uh, much grease just because uh, they don't really spin enough. And I guess that does make sense to a certain degree. Um, however, I am going to clean these off because there's actually a fair amount of grease in here. Let's see if I can get this one out. There we go. Yeah, it's because they, they definitely grease these ones up. So, but otherwise, it seems to look, uh, to look like a fairly run of the mill um, construction here. I don't really see anything that um, really jumps out at me. Yeah, it's a little dirty, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give everything a, a nice wipe down right now and uh, we'll put everything back together and uh, see what's up here. I do have to go grab a, I guess I'm not really that prepared. I, I thought I had some rags on the table, but I don't. I'll be right back, guys. A little bit, a little bit uh, dirty on this side, so, you know, no matter how clean a knife is, when, uh, well, at least production knife-wise, when it comes back, uh, you know, to the, to the consumer, there's always gonna be a little bit of dust and, you know, grease and whatnot on, on these. I mean, this it's just natural. It's really nothing to, you know, freak out about or anything like that but it, it's kind of nice feeling to 
you know, get the disassemble and clean and everything. So get all that gunk out. All right, that's good. We'll clean off the pivot of the blade. I'll just do this deal right here. Now look at that. Get the tang all cleaned up. I mean, for for the most part, this is pretty much just a brand new knife. There's really shouldn't be too much uh, other than just you know factory floor dust that comes off of this thing. I hope. <laughs> we'll see here. You know, one thing I found that was very interesting about this knife is the fact that it uses. Um, it uses uh, rag micarta, I think it is, and um, I think I think it's weird because I think at this price point you'd probably want to use carbon fiber. You know, at 250, I would expect carbon fiber, but you know, this is I guess okay. It's pretty. Although this is kind of sharp here, but you, you're never going to contact this, you know, while, while while it's actually installed in the knife. But everything seems to be put together pretty well. Um, I don't know what that is. I'm going to try and clean that off. Let's see here. Is this side? Let's see what this is. Hmm. A little bit of residue on that screw, uh, screw hole there. All right. Yep, yeah, it's gone. The one thing I do notice is that while I'm in here, is that uh, the screw. Um, the the screws from the from the uh, uh, from the handle scales like this one right here in the middle, it protrudes out ever so slightly. Uh, whoops, you're not gonna be able to see it that way. Protrudes out ever so slightly. You see that? It's right there. Um, oh, actually, this one does too from the bolster. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, you think you'd be using screws um, that would completely fit properly and not stick into the knife handle. Um, I guess, I mean, functionality wise, obviously you're not, it's not gonna like, be like you're gonna get caught up on it or anything like that because it's on the inside of the knife when it's closed. But at the same time, if your knife, if the centering on your knife was ever to be off, there's a possibility you could scratch your blade against that. So that's very interesting. Um, I will say that's, that's uh, I don't know if I would call that a, a disappointment, but that's definitely not what I was expecting um, uh, when, I, when I saw that, so. Let's see how these are doing. All right. All right, a little bit of stuff is coming out there. You can see that. Um, but for the most part, it looks pretty clean, basically. The pivot is notched on... Um, okay, well, you can't really see it. It's very, uh, very slight, but it's notched on this side. All right, you can see kind of um, where it's kind of flat there. And of course what that does is it's supposed to be, uh, when it goes in the pivot, your pivot opening should be notched uh, off as well. So this one, it fits in, you can take the screw out without having to put, uh, to use two, two screwdrivers to, um, to, you know, take it apart. In this case, it wasn't. So you got a round hole and then you got this thing right here that doesn't really do anything. Um, so what I, um, oh, hey, I didn't notice that. Actually, this is just a collar <laughs> because look, this side's coming out. Huh, that's very interesting. Let me see here. Let this track a little bit. Put one drop, and then I just run it around. No big deal. I put a little lube on the inside as well and run it around. Oops, let's get the uh, pivot back in there. There we are. Okay. There we are. And then go and knock the uh, lock the knife open. All right. Check for this. Seems to be together pretty. Well there. All right, let's go and put this pivot screw in, just uh, temporarily, of course. OK. 
Careful not to strip them out. There you go. Completely forgot there was a bolster on that side. Wonderful, huh? Okay, so now I have this tightened all the way down. Keep on tightening the wrong side. All right, so that is completely tight. All right, go and actuate it. All right, a little bit of blade play. Let's go ahead, actually, let me go ahead and tighten it over here. All right, so I got this put back together, but uh, I'm still getting blade play out of it. Let me try and figure this out here. So I'm getting very, very slight up and down play, which I didn't notice when I first, uh, when I first got the knife. Um, hmm, I wonder if I caused that or was it straight from Boker like that? Because I didn't do anything other than just you know, put it back here the way it was. So that's very interesting. Here, listen to this. Yep. No side to side, but now we have up and down play. Centering is now slightly off the opposite direction. So let me see. Let's see. All right, so let's take a look here. So centering, the centering is almost slightly that way, like a hair that way. So I guess I can live with that. More importantly, there's no side to side play, but ever so slight up and down play, which is very disappointing and surprising for a knife of this price point and for the fact that it is a Boker um, uh, tree brand. So, so I'm gonna break this one back in a little bit. There we go. So this is what I found out so far is that even on the, uh, the upper echelon of Boker products, um, they are still not as good as some other knives that are put together. Um, and the one thing I, I have noticed too is after taking this apart and putting it back together, um, I do feel a slight delineation between these two uh, scales here. This one, it feels like this hole right here for this screw is drilled ever so slightly off, like, you know, like a nano frac, uh, whatever, a fraction of a, of a bit off because I can feel a little bit here. And the only reason I say is it's not, I, I don't think it's like machined. Uh, I think it should be machined properly. If the scale moved down just a hair that, that way because there's an edge right here. And because that, I can feel the edge of the micarta scale right here. I mean, yeah, it just, it just literally feels like they, they just, they drilled this the, uh, hole a tiny bit off. This side is completely fine, however. This is like smooth. There's no delineation here and there's no delineation here on this side. And everything on this side feels great. Um, this side, however, is slightly off. So, uh, with that being said, um, I guess I, uh, 
I guess a um, <clears throat> kind of expected greatness out of a, a Boker Tree product. And like I said, I've owned three and they've been really, really good. So even within the Boker lineup, the Boker Tree Arbolito uh, lineup, um, there can be some production problems. Now, with that being said, would, would this actually affect my daily usage and everything? Probably not because, uh, you know, th this is like scrutiny right here. And, and you know, and I, I think I might make a video of this in the future is like, uh, um, as knife enthusiasts, are we overly critical of the knives that we get? And in certain cases, I would like to say yes, because I am very overly critical. And uh, and most of it is driven by the reviews and other other uh, YouTubers and knife reviewers alike. And uh, and they, they just get really into this. and. And uh, now as a collector, this would absolutely bug me. And I'm, again, moving away from the collecting aspect. And um, uh, while I know it's gonna be there, I guess I could always try and fix it myself by machining it, but I'm not going to, um, because this is gonna be a daily user. And in, in terms of functionality and using it, you know, it's not like it's creating a hotspot because of that mismatching scale. It's just that if you're OCD about it, you, this is gonna drive you nuts. But luckily so, I'm not OCD about it. Um, still feels great in the hand and uh, still very functional folder and extremely smooth. Yeah, look at that. Ah, liking it. But um, anyhow, uh, so there you go. So uh, I hope this video gives you a little bit of insight of, of, of the one that I received. Hopefully in, um, in future productions, uh, Boker will you know, maybe watch this video and see and maybe get their QC a little bit better in line. But let's face it, when compared to a Boker Plus, this is still like miles ahead of a Boker Plus uh, any day in terms of fit and finish, even with the, with the minor details like that, as crazy as this is gonna drive somebody. Uh, lockup is, is uh, solid left and right, but up and down on this one, ever so bit of tiny play, but I'm really muscling it to get that play out of here. But still, very interesting that that would happen on the, on the top of the line uh, from Boker. Um, still going to use it. I'm not going to send it back. Uh, if any of you guys up here uh, or, or out there <laughs> uh, get this particular knife, uh, you know, and chance it, let me know what your experiences are and let me know how the fit and finish on your uh, your uh, knife that you, you received because I would love to hear whether or not this is kind of across the board or if this is just the one I got and I just happen to be unlucky. So, all right, well, thank you for watching this disassembly video. I'll be doing a full review on this knife uh, after I get a chance to carry it and use it and live with it and see how it is. Um, comments, uh, questions, leave it below. Aside from that, have a nice day and take care.